Hi, my name is Anant Mittal. Some of my friends call me Antman. I'm a solutions architect at AWS and I work with public sector organizations to design and implement scalable, secure AWS solutions that addresses their unique business challenges. Thank you for joining me today. And without further ado, let's dive into the topic of the day. Let's talk about web hosting on AWS. AWS offers several services tailored for hosting web applications. Let's talk about some of the key services. First one is Amazon S3, also called as Simple Storage Service. This is ideal for static website hosting and S3 provides a scalable and reliable storage solution for web assets. S3 also enables you to store and retrieve virtually any amount of data, providing a secure and cost-effective solution for your static website hosting. Whether you are a small community college campus or large urban city, Amazon S3 allows you to seamlessly host your website with low latency and high durability. And here you pay as you go, which means you pay for what you use. Let's look at S3 web hosting in action. Once we are in the S3 console, we can click on create bucket. A bucket is a container for objects stored in S3. Uh, let's give it a unique name. I'm really trying to make it unique. And we have to unblock the, the public access. So I'll click on this check mark. And then I have to acknowledge that I really want to make it public. Let's leave the other settings as default and click on create bucket. You will see within no time your bucket is there. Click on your bucket and upload an, any HTML file. So I have created one HTML file. I'll show you the content of this HTML file. I just have a title over here, which says my website homepage, uh, H1 tag, welcome to my website and a uh, Paragraph now hosted on Amazon S3. So I can just drag and drop this object to my bucket. And then click on upload. And within no time, my file is uploaded. And I can see in my bucket the index.html is present. So now I need to make this bucket as public. To make the objects in your bucket publicly readable, you must write a bucket policy that grants everyone permission to get object. I mean, a read file from this bucket. So to do that, let's go over to permissions. We have to write a bucket policy, so I'll click on edit. The policy that we have to write, I have copied it from a public documentation. I'll paste it over here. It says that allow anyone to get object from this bucket and I have to provide the bucket name over here. I can copy the ARN from here and paste it over here. Once I have the policy in place, I'm going to save changes. My bucket policy is in place. Let's go back to objects view. And let's click on this object, the index.html. Once we are here, we can click on the object URL. Let's copy it. Let's try to open it in a new tab. Voila, there you are. 
The second service that you may use for website hosting is called as Amazon EC2. It's also called as Elastic Cloud Compute. It basically offers virtual servers in cloud. It allows users to host dynamic websites and have full control over the underlying infrastructure. Let's look at it in action. So I'll search for EC2. I want to create a new web server. So my intuition says I have to click on launch instance. Once we click on launch instance, it's asking me for a server name. So it's a virtual server. I'm just going to provide it a, a name. I'm going to call it a web server. Uh, it's asking me for the operating system that I want to choose. So I'm going to leave it as default. Amazon Linux is an amazing operating system. I'm going to use that. I'm okay with one CPU and one gig of memory because it's going to be a small website. Now it's a required information. So I'm going to create a new key pair. I'm going to call it a key pair one. When I create a key pair, it downloads a PEM file on my desktop. I can use this PEM file later to log into this server. There are a few network configurations. I'm going to leave it as default. I'm also going to create a HTTP website. So I'm going to allow HTTP traffic to this web server. I will click on this advanced details over here and scroll down all the way to the bottom where it says user data. So user data is a section where I can place my scripts that are going to run when the server first boots up. So I have a few scripts written somewhere else. I have just copied it from there. These scripts are basically creating a LAMP stack and creating a website basically. Once I have all this information in place, I'm going to click on launch instance. And that's about it. I'll wait for a few seconds. After waiting for a few seconds, let's go back to the instances from the breadcrumbs. We can go to the instances. Let's look at the running instances. And we see the web server I created. It's over here. Let's look at some of the details of this web server. We have a public IP address and we have a private IP address. So I'm going to copy this uh, public IP DNS. Now try to open it in a new tab. Voila, my page is there. We have a few more services like Elastic Beanstalk. So Beanstalk makes it even easier for developers to quickly deploy and manage applications in AWS Cloud. Let's look at another service. It's called as LightSail. In LightSail, you just have to select your platform. You have to select your blueprint and you have to select uh, instance plan and you create the instance. Let's go back to the home page by clicking on AWS. If you plan to build a full stack web and mobile application on AWS, you may use AWS Amplify as well. You can build and host your front end Add features like authentication and storage, connect to real-time data sources, and deploy and scale to millions of users using this service. It's called as AWS Amplify. And as you can see, we have many services that you can use for AWS uh, website hosting. So what are you waiting for? Log in and explore more. Thank you.